A little over a year ago, I built a tiny hydraulic pump powered by a 24-volt DC motor. Due to circumstances, I didn't get any further with it. Now it's time to continue where I left off. In this video series, I build a tiny tabletop hydraulic press. I hope you enjoy this series. And, as always, if you have any constructive criticism, suggestions or questions, you are more than welcome to share it in the comments. I already have a tiny press, a simple and very primitive tool that I quickly threw together a few years ago because I needed it. I could press up to just over a metric ton with it. Despite its limitations, I have used it often. What I want to build now is only a little bigger, but more accurate, smarter, and more versatile. And, I hope, more beautiful. Tools may be beautiful too, I think. At least I really enjoy working with beautiful tools. If you search YouTube for projects to build a hydraulic press, you will find the same scenario in many videos. Take a car jack, some steel beams, do some welding or use a lot of nuts and bolts, a lick of paint, and the press is ready. But I have no use for such a press. They are much too big, too inaccurate and too crude. Here is some footage from the video a year ago. I don't know yet if I'm going to use this pump with this press, although the maximum pressure is with about 130 bar probably high enough. I want to make a very simple elbow grease powered pump first, and then later I might use this small pump. This is a first sketch of what I have in mind. A mini portal press of about 30 by 30 by 10 centimeters. The weight should remain under 15 kilograms so that it can be put back on its shelf very easily. The press cylinder should be movable horizontally and vertically. It can also be a slim design, I like that. A little further on in the video, I calculate the most important forces on main components so that I am not unexpectedly treated to a fatal fracture and such. The mini pump is, as mentioned, very simple, but should still be able to deliver the required pressure to the press cylinder. The most important parameters of this small pump are also calculated later. Although I would be using the tiny press for press forces of up to no more than three metric tons, I assumed a test pressure of 300 bar for these strength calculations. This results in a press force of 6 tons. It is at these large forces that I come close to material failure. In particular, the grade 12.9 M8A bolts will be in the danger zone at maximum test pressure if the cylinder is mounted all the way to the left or right. I will ensure that a pressure relief valve is installed that limits the maximum press force to 3 metric tons, or about 150 bar. The mini pump is designed in such a way that with a force of 100 newtons exerted on the lever, a maximum pressure of approximately 140 bar is created and a pressing force of 2 and 3 quarters of a ton. With a stroke length of 25 millimeters of the press cylinder, almost 50 strokes of the lever are required, so that each stroke results in approximately half a millimeter of displacement. I have little experience with hydraulics so I try to determine as much as possible by measurement. For example, how much pressure can a simple O-ring withstand? At what pressure does it start to leak? And is it even a usable seal for this purpose? So I first make a small test setup in which I use one, two or three O-rings at will. The depth and width of a groove is precisely matched with the dimensions of the O-ring
Okay, the test cylinder and plunger are ready. Let me first see at what pressure such a small O-ring fails. I bought a cheap load cell with readout. The maximum range is 2 tons. I never expected that one such an insignificant little O-ring could withstand so much pressure. Here, I go up to 450 bar. There is a small leak somewhere, because the pressure gradually decreases a bit. I am now going to test with three O-rings in series. This will probably prevent the leakage. That didn't help much. I don't see any difference in leak rate between the experiments with one and three rings. That probably means the leak is elsewhere. No oil visible on the top, but on the thread at the bottom, there is oil. 
I have removed the Teflon gasket off camera, degreased everything thoroughly, and glued the bolt with extra lock in the thread of the cylinder. That did the trick. After this, I cranked up that little press to just over a ton, which resulted in a whopping 862 bar of pressure in the test cylinder. And even with only one O-ring, there was no noticeable pressure loss after almost four hours. This gives me enough confidence to start the actual construction. Here I saw some stock to size with my lovely tiny tabletop bandsaw. But I don't get any further than purchasing materials, including a very cute digital tiny 400 bar pressure gauge, in this video. I do give an estimate of the construction weight and the construction costs. I wonder if I will go over budget again. Thanks for watching, and until the next video in which we will drill, mill, turn, saw, chamfer, press, grind, in short, do the fun stuff.